Welcome to Lunch Story. In each episode, you will get a behind the scenes look at a course, a program, or for the cloud. Here is your host, Dr. Ada Ballard. Hi, everyone. Welcome to yet another fantastic conversation about launches. Today, I'm super excited to have Abigail Orn with me. Abigail is a writer and a historian. She earned her PhD in history from Carnegie Mellon University in 2017, where she studied 20th century US history, urban history, and the history of immigration and ethnicity. She's the co-founder of The Metropole, a blog, the blog for the Urban History Association, and as co-editor has seen overseen publications of over 400 articles and essays. In her free time, she reads voraciously, practices yoga, and watches a lot of YouTube. And in addition to all that, it's been my great pleasure to work with Abigail over the last couple of years on our joint project called Devon Think for Historians, an online course that helps historians and qualitative researchers make the most of Devon Think, uh, which is a database software for Mac computers. And in our conversation today, we'll discuss uh, this you know, course that we created and how we launched it. And, and I know from chatting with Abigail over the years, we may go off on a few little tangents, but we'll, we'll, we'll also pull it back. <laughs> we'll also pull it back to, it's always a good time to chat with you. Thanks so much for coming, Abigail. Um, take us back, I don't even remember how many years ago it was, but how did, how did this start and how did Devin Think for Historians come to be? Yeah, um, well, thank you for having me. Um, the series, I think, is such a valuable resource um, for um, people who are, you know, trying to get something off the ground for the first time, uh, or maybe the tenth time. Um, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so I think, if memory serves, it would have been January of 2018. Okay. Okay. I um, had somewhat recently attended a uh, workshop that you did for members of a group we were in um, called self-employed PhDs mm. uh, where you showed automation techniques yes yes, yes I thought yes. to myself you know I used a database software to write my dissertation yeah I loved it I really attribute a lot of my success um, in finishing in the time I had funding for. <laughs> as um, important as a graduate student. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, to my use of this database. Mm -hmm. And I, I was and remain consistently surprised at how few uh, historians use database software. Or rather, I should say, how many rely on analog. Um, and and um, less sophisticated digital tools okay. Okay. to keep their extensive archival materials organized so that they can write history. Um, so I just said to Ada, I think you're the perfect person to create um, like a how-to guide for historians about databases and software. And I said, I think there's a, a market there because no one else is doing it and, and it's badly needed. And I, I shouldn't speak for you. You can <laughs> tell your side, but and then I was like, wow, that's amazing. I, I don't want to do that, but if we could do it together. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'm not doing that on my own, but let's do it together. And that was really the start of a approaching, I guess we're almost finished our second, year, third year. Wait, yeah. yeah, almost finished our third year. That's mm -hmm. amazing. That's yeah. so fun. It's been quite the ride. It's been quite the ride. So the fun part for me has been um, working with someone else on this project. So both of us are business owners. Um, people that watch this video series know I do other things besides work on software for store, uh, software, uh, online courses for hist historians. And in your introduction, you, there's lots of things you're, you're doing as well. So tell us, tell me, tell us and me, I guess everyone, uh, what were your thoughts are on, on partnering up and you know, your reaction when I was like, I'm not gonna do this by myself, but let's do it together. Oh, great <laughs> question. And, and you know, one 
that I haven't thought about before because um, it was, I felt like a no brainer. I think you were at least a year ahead of me, if not more in launching your business. Mm -hmm. And I felt in very experienced hands oh. following your lead. I remember that as you, as you just said, you said, I don't know what historians do. I can't do that. <laughs> um, uh, and then you said, but let's see if there is a market there. And I think that very first meeting, we drafted an email that I sent to the cobbled together list or, or maybe I put on Twitter, I don't even remember anymore, but we created using MailChimp, somehow we distributed um, a, a sign up yes. to people and said like, our, here's kind of the idea, you'll learn how to use this database software. Yes. If you put your email down, we'll, you know, give you a discount when, when we launch it, if we, yeah. if we launch it. Um, and we got, I think 20 people. I mean, it was definitely enough that we thought, okay, it has legs. Yes. And that experience of, of, I don't even know how to describe it. I just felt like I was in such good hands. Like you just, you had such a, a good idea. And oh. I, I, I'm a seat of the pantser. I just kind of go and try and do, I started a business without a business plan. Yeah. I didn't know to have a business plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I've just always kind of jumped in you know, head first and, and made the best of whatever happened. And you had this process, which I think uh, I'd like to definitely come back to you before the end of this conversation. Sure, sure, sure. Because working with you has absolutely 100% changed my understanding of process. Oh, wow. Well, that's great. Yes. That is great. It has been, it has been life changing. <laughs> Well, processes and systems can do that. I, yeah, I, I'm totally, you're, you're preaching to the choir here. So I, I'm in, I'm in, I'm, and I'm happy. I, that wasn't my initial intention. Um, I can remember in the beginning, almost feeling like, oh, maybe I'm pressuring her, but I felt very strongly. I was like, no, we need to make sure before we go down the path, because we had a lot, a lot of different ideas. We were thinking, I remember initially you were like, I want to make a PDF. And I was like, hmm. I think a course might be better. Um, and so we had a lot of different versions that we were uh, debating about. And as you know, my background's in engineering. I, I know historians, I know way more historians now, <laughs> but I had no idea. And, and I was learning about your research, like what the process was, what needed to be, what needed to be done. And so I was very curious initially to say like, okay, does, does the market exist there? Are people, or, you know, is there a market willing to pay for these types of tools? And I was really impressed at how quickly um, we got a response, you know, like, and I, I, I know several times along our journey on this together, you've always been like, well, I don't know, not that many people responded. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> you had such a fabulous um, network and the historian community I've learned is just so well connected and supportive of each other. It's just been really a, a great experience. So it was a, the perfect opportunity because you had a, you know, you're fabulous and a fabulous historian and you had a Twitter following and all of these things. It was really easy to set out a couple of messages and we quickly created a landing page in, in MailChimp and collected some names. And then we were like, oh, okay, so let's do it. And we sat down and we talked a lot about your research process and I had lots of questions about why things happen the way they do. Um, and then we created the course and we don't have to get into the nitty gritties of the course. We'll share the link if anyone wants to learn about it. Um, it's in a couple of, it's in a bundle now. So you can have a beginner's version and then a super user version or you can bundle them. And it's been, it's been quite the ride. It's been quite the ride. Um, we were chatting, I was like, oh, I think we, we're missing a little bit of context. So. 
Um, to catch everyone up that may not be a qualitative researcher, what yeah. Abigail's process was, um, I guess in, in real terms, is that she would physically go, and this for me was mind blowing. I was like, you physically go to a place called an archive, look through physical boxes of documents, find the ones that you're interested in, and then take pictures of them, turn those pictures into PDFs, and then eventually synthesize ideas from those PDFs and write them down. And so that was the big process that in our initial conversations you were walking me through and I was asking all sorts of questions. Um, no judgment for sure, mostly just being like, wait, what happens? And this <laughs> happens in you know 2018, why? <laughs> and then thinking again to being like, we have computers and the computers do great things because as everyone knows, um, probably unless you're, you're new to watching these videos, like I'm really into technology and, and automation and helping um, people do things more efficiently. That's why I was speaking to the self-employed PhD group in the first place. So it was an interesting um, case study for me to just observe like, oh, wow, look at these opportunities. And it was been so much fun to chat with you. And, and we're still continuously coming up with new ideas know, continuously, um, we just created a YouTube video not that long ago about a new tool that we just discovered. So um, I, I say all that to give some context to the, the research process so people understand what it is that we're talking about. But for our launch, um, that's what I wanted to chat about, which we used Twitter, um, your Twitter following, and uh, we created an email list in MailChimp and we created a landing page in MailChimp. And then um, we ended up selecting CourseCraft as our oh. course management platform. Yeah, I wasn't even there yet. <laughs> I'm a historian, I'm very chronological. Like, we, to me, like we hadn't gotten there yet. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. And, and uh, CourseCraft is kind yeah. of the, the middle of it all, right? Course craft is how we facilitate the bundles that I talked about earlier. So we can sell individual courses or we can bundle them together and provide a discount. And um, it, it facilitates the payments, um, delivers the course, you know, people can create their usernames and passwords. And then another thing that we ended up doing, which I think is very cool, is um, we started, we reached out to the Devon Think people. I can't exactly remember how that happened, but we have a, a, an affiliate link through them. Yes. So if people are, you know, find our course and are like, I don't have done and think I want to get started. We have a link um, that, uh, you know, I, I believe in some cases gives them a discount and in addition gives us a commission. Is that correct or no? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So um, Devon Technologies, which is the, you know, parent company that makes Devon Think offers an incredibly generous education discount. And yes. so we always encourage people first to take advantage of that if they are eligible. And if they're not, you know, if they use our code, um, then I believe, right, they get a small discount and we receive a small commission. Yeah, which has been super fun. Um, for me, I'll kind of on the tech backend part, like how do all these pieces fit together? And I also really appreciate um, Devon Technologies, like they're just amazing. They have an amazing support team. They're a great, amazing. just amazing company on so many levels, but it's great the, um, the resources they gave to us as people that promote their tools. And then also the support they give to the people that uh, use their tools. And they've just been very so kind to us um, in sharing the work that we've, that we've done with their, <clears throat> with their audience as well. So it's been, that's been really, really amazing. Um, and I say all of that to all of you that may not be historians and you might not be interested even in an online class is to think about the offering that you're creating, the thing that you're launching as its own little ecosystem, right? Like there's a little bit, there's a community aspect that we've spoken about already with the fabulous community that of historians Abigail had. And we crafted a community as well. We got to connect with the great folks at Devon Technologies. Um, we created a list, which is in and of itself, it's its own community. Um, mm -hmm. I hinted at, we have a YouTube channel now and people watch our videos and comment. So that has its own uh, space. And I've been surprised how, um, how that process has gone and how it does feel very like community-like. I don't know if that's the feeling that you have as well. Um, and it's nice to be able to bring people information that they wouldn't have not necessarily gathered in a nice, friendly format. Do you think I, anything else you'd like to add there? 
Um, no, I guess um, I, if, yeah, I, I guess what I would add is the thing that really surprised me about our launch is we kind of had this initial bump mm -hmm. and then really kind of slow, steady growth. And then we hit, I think the one and a half year mark, or, you know, I mean, we, it wasn't new anymore. And then all of a sudden um, it really took off. Mm -hmm. um, and we had tried um, Google ads before yes. and that had, yeah. really, you know, there had been a few different marketing offering a little bit of a sale or mm -hmm. nothing had really stuck. And I don't, I don't know that if, if it was YouTube or it was Dev and Technologies sharing our things or the combination of those, just like getting enough of an SEO presence across, you know, multiple, you know, uh, mediums. Um, mm -hmm. But it, you know, it's like a, one of those sleeper movies, right? Like does it, it, it wasn't a blockbuster, it didn't have a blockbuster weekend, but it yeah. kind of had this, um, robust life regardless and I I think that for me as an entrepreneur it has been a really good lesson not to get discouraged um, if your launch is not uh, you know a Marvel a Marvel yeah. movie you know yeah <laughs> that's a great point and more of like a an indie like a, I always think of the example of a, my big fat Greek wedding that mm -hmm. movie made a ton of money yeah. uh, it just wasn't in its first weekend it was that people saw it and told their friends to go see it and then they saw it and told their friends to go see it and it stayed in theaters for months mm -hmm. um and was like just a slow and steady money maker um, and I, uh, I, I think that that's just been instructive. Like, yeah, that's that great, another model of success for know? sure, for sure, for sure. And I think that model has worked so well, um, as I said earlier, because we, you know, there's other stuff going on. <laughs> and so it, it wasn't like, um, this, this story and this product might be different than some of the other people I've interviewed where. Well, I almost you know, everyone always has lots of things going on, but for for us, this this uh, course has been important and great. But it's never the intention, even initially, wasn't to you know create Devon Think for Historians Incorporated and put you know all of our time and energy into it. So it was. Um, it's been interesting to see how that's gone along, and also the benefit of consistency, right? So we do send out newsletters. I'll admit they're not monthly. Um, we create YouTube videos. We've created a couple of opt-ins, um, some free content. We have a, a welcome sequence for people when they sign up the first time. So there was work done, but that work has been done over you know, years, literally. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been, it's been great. And I, I, I want this conversation to, there's just so many things to learn from. One, I think your your point, Abigail, about it, you know, there wasn't this what a lot of people in the launch world want is like you know, hundreds of, of sales all the way in the beginning, and you know, the money is just rolling in, and that it does work that way for some people, not in this particular case, but it has been a lovely, um, steady, um, and you know, and it is growing over time as well. Um, place uh, for sales and to help people, which I think is really, really exciting. Um, and then also the other point I'd love to stress is that working with someone can be really great and identifying um, you know, complementary skills. We talk a lot in, in these series or spoken a lot in this series about how tech can complement you if you're working on your own. And that's hundred percent true. Um, but also tech and another person may complement you as well. And I find that um, we have very different skills and that is really valuable and uh, beneficial. So I think it's led to a, a much better product when we work together than either one of us would have ever dreamt of creating on our own. I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah. I mean, well, beyond the obvious that like I could not have created it. I don't have the skill set at all to, to code or um, write scripts. Um, I, and and this is now I'll, I'll unpin what I what I pinned earlier about process, which is I um, until I worked with you did not 
understand how poorly I understood process. Um, you know, where I saw one step, you would often see three or four steps. Mm. And I have found um, in my professional life, but also in my personal life, I um, spend a lot of my free time um, doing community organizing and uh, political activism. It is um, a very valuable skill to have to be able to break, uh, you know, to, to, to decide on an objective and be able to break it down into as many little steps as possible so that you can distribute the, the tasks yeah. and um, give, you know, the tasks that are best suited to the, to the people, for sure, for sure. Yeah, to the right people. And um, so certainly your expertise informed the course because you really provided the framework we use. Oh, wow. um, in, in terms of thinking about workflow. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for me personally, it's been a, con a continuous education and um, I am so grateful for it. Oh. Um, and um, I just, I, I wish that I could like gift it to other, <laughs> to other people. <laughs> So like spend a few hours with Ada. <laughs> you too will understand that that thing you're telling me that you think is so easy is actually a million steps. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great point. And especially in the idea of, of, of launching something, there are so many, so many steps um, that we went through, so many steps that everyone else that I've um, interviewed has gone through from idea and conception all the way through to um, you know, eventually, well, first figuring out, hey, is this thing actually have legs or not? Is there a market for it? What right. do I want to offer them? We had this going back and forth about, you know, course versus PDF type thing. And then, um, you know, what's the right technology? And then, okay, how can we set up all the technology? And then, you know, having it get out there and, and improving it over time. It's, it is really a process and it's an ongoing process. I don't think, um, it will ever stop. <laughs> so my qu next question for you is this, Abigail, what about this process, this journey that you've been on, we've been on and with Devin Think for Historians has been the most surprising? Oh, um, that's such a good question. Um, the most surprising. Uh, I have a couple answers. I'm trying okay. to decide. Yeah. I'm trying you, to pick you can give us a top three then. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I think, more of a, a process answer and then I have a people answer. Sure, sure. Um, process wise, it's been surprising to me how. Um, the work comes in waves. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, you and I will spend a week where we each are putting in five to 10 hours on, on various parts of, of um, Devon Think for Historians. And then I might not touch it again for four weeks. And then we decide to do another YouTube video or add uh, some additional information to one of the lessons based on an update or a yes. suggestion that someone made. Um, so I, I think, um, you know, whereas originally we conceived of it as, as set it and forget it yeah. a little bit, um, it's mostly that, yep. but it is not entirely that. Yes. Um, and that's not a complaint. It's just, it's just the reality. Um, right. right. And, um, the people one I would say is you know, I, I was in, in the classroom for a long time and, and we often talk about a pedag pedagogical challenge being teaching to the middle. You know, mm -hmm. you might have a student who 
had walks in the first day knowing nothing and someone who walks in kind of basically could probably teach the class yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? and how do you um meet all of those needs so neither gets lost or bored um yes, yes. and then there's everyone in between and um our students in this course you know the the, the um researchers who take this course are they're students, they also have a middle. Um, and I think uh, one thing that has surprised me, well, one is to see that replicated, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and to, to accept and understand that our course is gonna be too hard for some people, despite our best efforts to make it as entry level friendly as possible and as basic as we can. Um, there's always going to be someone, not always, there will occasionally be someone who needs it even more basic. Mm. Um, and that there will also be people who are like, oh, I, I knew this all already. Right. Right. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> but if I taught, you know, everything to you, then, you know, other people would would um, struggle. And I, I think um, that's something, you know, when you're launching a, a product, a product like a course or um, a coaching, um, it's important to remember that like, that's just kind of the reality. And um, there'll be people that you're going to strive to help at both ends. That's just really challenging if you're going to serve your main clientele. Right. Right, um, right. And it's not personal. Right, 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 right. Those are two such a great points, great points. And I, I have a couple I'll share and they're so different, which is so interesting. But as you were chatting, I was like, oh yeah, that that is um, 100% true. And I think that that's why in, in some ways over, over time, we've introduced different options and, and why in part we have our YouTube videos, why in part we offer like workshops and consultations to help people that might be at different points, which um, you know, was never anywhere near our, our in our brains when we, this process started. But as the process moves on, you learn so much. And I think that's something that's consistent across everyone that I've spoken to. Like you start off with one intention and then like, oh, I'm in this completely different place and it's fine, but you know, it's just different from where, where I intended to start out. So that, those are two really cool places for me. And I feel silly saying, it cause I'm, I guess I am very tech oriented, but for me, the biggest surprises were all about the technology. So, um, and so much about the maintenance because I have worked with business owners, you know, over for years now and helping them get set up with their courses um, and launch them and, you know, do all that fabulous stuff. And not so many, only a handful of the people I've worked with, do I stay with them and see kind of the ongoing customer service, um, but being intimately involved in this, um, in this project, I'm like, oh, wow, I'm seeing the emails come in, the questions, the, um, the, uh, it reminds me a little bit of the time when I worked at Walt Disney World um, in undergrad, and they would say, you know, when in, in, in traditions, which was training, what the training is called, or was called back then, they would say, you know, you need to smile and answer the, like, someone will come and ask you this question, what time is the three o'clock parade? And when you ask you what time is the three o'clock parade, you smile and you'd say, well, it starts at three o'clock in this place. And by the time it goes, you know, you know if it starts from three o'clock in Frontierland, by the time it gets to Main Street USA, it'll be whatever time. And I remember the first time someone asked me that question, you know, what time is the three o'clock parade? And I was like, I'm so happy I had this training because, you know, you might look at someone like they have three heads. You just <laughs> said it was three o'clock, right? And, and I've had that, 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 um, that an occasion, right? An occasion that's happened as part of our customer service where you're like, well, that was on the page or, you know, we said that someplace else. You want to have that reaction, but it's like, no, you smile and clearly it wasn't clear or organized or whatever. And either way, your intention is to help someone. So you smile and you answer the question. So that was a long, long story <laughs> to describe that the customer service <laughs> was um, was surprising and the amount of customer service, because we did put a lot of effort in like, you know, setting and forgetting, as you said. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the tech stuff, like the, 
the amount of time it took to record the videos, the amount of time it took to edit the videos, the amount of time it took when Devin Think upgraded from Devin Think 2 to Devin Think 3. So I, that was an immense amount of time. Um, and then when our students would give us feedback about the audio quality or the video quality, and you know, you would look at it on your computer, I'd look at it on my computer, I'd be like, I don't get it. Like, it sounds fine, it looks great, but then we know there's a real problem, hence the three o'clock parade, and you know, we'd work with technical support and doing all sorts of things to improve their quality and their experience. So um, it's those things that were, really surprising for me. It's been very rewarding. It's always lovely to you know, have a conversation with someone and help them solve their problem. Uh, but those, those bits have been the most surprising. Yeah. Yeah, I love that story. Um, I think that, I think that's just um, good. It, it's a good uh, analogy for a lot of um, interactions in life, I think, um, and quite funny. Um, I agree with you about the time. Um, you know, I have long known about myself. If I think something's going to take X amount of time, it's going to take two X amount of time. <laughs> this takes five X. I mean, we consistently underestimated yeah. <laughs> that, that, um, the startup time, um, even the second time we did it, when we updated the whole course yeah. for the seven thing three transition um we thought oh this time we know what x is <laughs> no no we didn't no, we but didn't. you know it's it's um you know once you get started that like the only way through is through and it's um it's worth finishing and um, i think we both feel like putting the time in was worth it and, uh, has it has yielded a really um a, pro a product we're we're proud of yes for sure for sure and we have a set of students and have you know, overwhelmingly positive feedback so i'm i'm really grateful for the opportunity and that the fact that we've been able to work on this together it has been amazing chatting with you um let us let me know if you have any final thoughts um and then let everyone know how they can contact you or follow you and learn more about you sure um so i have a website um it's uh just my name avigailoran.com um i am on twitter at historian oran um where i share a lot of urban history related content from um the Metropole blog, uh, and also some activism related content. Uh, and I, um, I also hope people will check out um, our uh, course craft, uh, Devon Think for Historians landing page, which we will link below. Um, yeah. And um, am I Am I missing anywhere else? I think those are the best places to find me. Yeah, and then if you know, if you like us chatting, our, uh, our YouTube channel is pretty much there. Okay. I <laughs> knew I was forgetting just, something. Just chatting back and forth with uh, with some screen shares. Um, so if you are a Mac user and think a database could be of use, then check us out. But hey, no pressure on on that. Um, yeah, well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, and uh, have a great day. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to be notified for the next episode. If you know someone that would benefit from this episode, please share. If you are ready to improve your launch results, visit Dr. Ada's website at www.operationsallied.com. All of the links mentioned in the episode are in the description below. Have a great day.